Well, I hope everybody's having a good evening. Hey Daryl, how you doing? Yeah, working on a splash page. It's a, it's a pretty busy one. We got all these new characters that are just revealed, you know, as Helena comes out of the woods and um, it reveals what the noise is. And the noise is uh, this little kiwi bird that has a bell around his neck. Hope you're having a good night tonight, man. Nice. Always good to hear people working on pages. Pinups are nice and all, but pages are, are where it's at. I just like seeing everybody do, you know, do different stuff with them. Like there's, like there's a base visual language, but everybody gets to be creative and, you know, different ways of telling a story and different, you know, it's, uh, it's what I love about the form, you know. I'll have to make like a zillion decisions on, you know, every page. And it's those decisions that, you know, make things unique to our drawing. I haven't had time to draw it all today. It has been all graphic design really like the last two days. Even on my lunch break, I've had to do stuff like today. I had to go back to the eye doctor and I got a COVID test, and, which came back negative. So, you know, knock on wood. But had a co had a couple of coworkers who are sick. So that was, Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I like, um, on this page, I, I, you know, it's pretty straightforward in the storytelling. It's not super creative, but I do move the camera like you'll see um, the opposite side of this shot, like the camera spins around. And pages are just, they're hard. They take a lot longer. You know, I've been probably working on these pencils for in between other work for a couple days now. I always see a, something I missed or something I messed up. Some place that needs reinforcement, more shadow. Just based on trying to give it more of a three dimensionality to it. But this character here, this Finn man, um, I, uh, I came up with him in college. I actually made a giant sculpture of him in college. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that because I actually just submitted some artwork to uh, an alumni art show. So they've been, they've been pretty good to me in the past about hanging stuff that's, you know, um, commercial art. So...
try to show like she's her foot's like pushing into the dirt some so we got some bits of dirt spitting up piling up yeah splashy yeah I gotta be honest, I lost track of uh, what page number it is. I'll have to look it up and write it on the damn thing after I'm done. It's a double-sized issue, so like I, I know I have more than a full issue done, so we've gotta be in the home stretch. I do have one big double-page spread towards the end that's like a big fight page with this character here and another character. I paced it out that way so that um, I could, because I like to do all the thumbnails before I even touch a page. Like I, I thumbnail the whole book and I do my pacing revisions at that point. Um, I think it's important to be able to see the whole book as it as you intend it to be before investing all that time into it. Because like it's a reading experience, so you're like you know you're playing the notes, like you're putting the beats in. Uh, these okay and one of the things you'll notice here like uh, the horizon line is slanted and then like the foreground elements here are drawn fully these midground elements are like about half drawn i would describe as and then i've got a layer of silhouettes like the tree comes down this way and then we want part of the silhouette there in front of the tree. So you want to give it as much depth as you can. And again, like nobody's going to notice these plants in the background except me, but if they look bad or if they look out of place or if they're out of perspective, they'll, they'll stick out. Like it's the kind of thing you don't want, or at least I'm not intending for someone to take super close notice of the background foliage, but it has to be there and it has to be correct. So. The rest of this tree will be about there. So foliage comes up to about there. Uh, I did get uh, some cool stuff in. Um, I got these back from CBCS. Um, from Colorado Springs. Uh, they're signed by me, John Lucas, and Pat Broderick. Pat's right there, John's right there, who did the cover, uh, pencils and inks, and then obviously me. And um, I can now actually offer uh, grading if somebody buys a book. Um, there's, there's Iron Face. This one's signed by Joe, John, and myself, Joe St. Pierre. And then uh, I got a uh, the Red Sonia exclusive that I did signed, and you know these are all uh, going to be available. Um, still trying to figure out pricing on what's fair in the market these days for you know uh, independent comics. I, I really don't know. Um, the guy Cody who works for CBCS has been very helpful, but those will all be for sale. Um, at shows and on my website and stuff in the coming days. And if you ever want like a um, sketch cover that I do to be submitted for grading, or if you ever want any of the books off of my website uh, graded, I'll be able to get that done for people with CBCS. Um, I have a few reasons for, for working with them. Um, one, because they, they, they treated me really nicely. The CGC hasn't given me the time of day, so. 
that means a lot to me. Yeah, I don't, I really don't know gr the graded comics market at all. And I don't pretend to, but I know that people like them. And um, yeah, I wanted to be, I'd been asked for like great getting stuff graded for people for years. Um, and I wanted to be able to do that for folks. There had to be a way to do it. And uh, we figured it out. Well, let's get into some inking, shall we? I'll work on this panel later. I actually have a finished picture of these characters if you guys want to see it. That's what they look like inked. Uh, you got the fin man, you got the lady with the spike on her arm, the big guy, the little kiwi bird, the old hunter. Right. That's what they look like. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got mine yesterday, too. Did you get the um, the fancy um, megahertz, the shiny cover? That looked real nice. Did you get a... What, what did you pick up? Did you get the uh, just the new Z book? Or...
Oh, nice. You got the fancy all black cover. It's very, it's very fancy. I saw one of those um, at, I believe, Colorado. It's like the tuxedo edition. That was very fancy. Very nice. Thanks for supporting the book, man. Uh, I'm sure you immediately flipped to the beautiful pinup in the back of the book, which was created on this very stream. It is. It's the pe the penguin edition, or the yeah, the fancy black tie edition. Yeah, those came out real sharp. That's right. That's right. The only pinup in the book. This guy. I must have guilted him into it at some point, or he felt bad just because I did it for him. I, I, you know, I, I like supporting my buddies Kickstarters and, you know, I, I only have so much money. So if I can support them by showing their stuff to people who follow my work, then, you know, you know how it works. I uh, have, a, have a little vacation coming up and uh, in typical comic person fashion, I was looking up comic book stores in the area of where I will be. So. I will uh, definitely report back to you, Jonathan, with uh, what I find in the north in the north countries where I'll be visiting. But uh, yeah, if you're around, you know, you get a beer this weekend or something. <sighs> what have I been watching lately? Um, like that show Reservation Dogs. That's a good show. Uh, what We Do in the Shadows. Those are good shows. We still do not have Disney Plus, so I have not seen any of the, the She-Hulk or any of that stuff. But it looks fun. I, I always enjoyed the comic, so... First thing, yes, yes, sir. I'll, I'll make two copies, one for the archive, um, maybe some visual aids. It probably won't be a PowerPoint though. It'll just be like a, the classic printed flip through reports. There was a company that um, back when I worked at the print house used to print their monthly reports with us and they spent like thousands of dollars printing reports, just thousands. And we'd put them together, you know, real nice three ring, uh, big, big three ring binder for like the, the end of the year ones and like, you know, comb binding or spiral binding for the, the regular ones. It was actually stuff like that where I found out. Um... Oh, oh, I, th I think I think we're formulating a plan here. 
for a, for a bin deal at the local shop. If I can use my brush to do this part a little easier, those little details, you know, they take some extra focus. Oh, I've got a split hair. It's because my brush was getting a little dry. Let's see if we can get it out. I've got some new tips for this. It's probably getting to be time where I got to replace it. These things last a long time, but they don't last forever. Yeah, I made a six foot tall sculpture of this character uh, back in college. If I find the picture of it, I've got a picture somewhere. The, the face and the head were paper mache with wire um i used a lot of like trash bags and melted plastic for the body um Does part of it still exist? No, it, it eventually just fell apart because it was not um, it was not made out of like permanent stuff. But yeah, I came up with the Fin Man a long time ago. You know he. Uh, he had the big fin that had like these directions for his thing. He had like the suspenders made out of stone, which I carved out of like foam. We had to do a large sculpture for this class. Um, and they photographed it and published it for the, um, the school art journal. I don't know, looking at it, looking back at it, it you know, I, I guess it was more impressive for its scope than its execution. So I don't know how well a photograph holds up. Yep, yeah, it just fell apart over time. I kept the head for a while, um, but I think it fell apart at some point when I lived in Quincy. I saw Jay uh, over the weekend when I got my hair cut. He's fully recovered from his bout with COVID. Um, it was, uh, it was nice to see him. We hadn't hung out in ages. He was sick. I was busy. He was busy. I was sick at one point. You know, it was just... Yeah, I have not drawn at all today, so this is really nice. It's good to see everybody tonight, too. I do. I enjoy hearing from everybody. I 
and I've been pushing the uh, the live stream at, uh, at at live events. Been talking to people about it. A lot of people are like interested, but I don't know if anybody from uh, the last couple things has shown up. Got a couple folks from Colorado Springs that pop on pretty regularly, which is nice. Yeah, I've been doing a ton of graphic design lately, so it's been less exciting, but pays the bills. So gotta keep the lights on. Got some cran blackberry juice going.
right, it's probably gonna move over here because I'll smudge that if I keep going that direction. Yeah, I'm glad you dug it. I liked it too. It was a it was a fun show. Um, I liked the the story arc that they picked, and I, I liked the the bonus episode. So I hope you check that out at some point. Um, they picked some good good comics to adapt. One of them was a, a pretty spectacular issue that was drawn by uh, Kelly Jones. And. Uh, yeah, I hope the algorithm was kind to the show and it wasn't, you know, review bombed or anything because I, I enjoyed it. You know, did you, uh, did you have a favorite character or episode? Because uh, yeah, Camille liked it too, which it's always nice when the, yeah, the better half also enjoys the show. I mean, they certainly spent a, a good deal of money on the uh, the special effects and everything. I don't know. I, I saw people complaining about them online. I thought they I thought the special effects looked great. All the shots with Matthew and uh, you know everything in the dreaming, Goldie. I forget, do you venture, I mean, I know you're, you, you've got the Transformers bug, but do you venture outside of like the superhero genre for like your, your, your leisure reads uh, a bunch? You pretty much stick to that. Because I think some people thought that Sandman, like when it first came out, I remember working at the store, they thought it was a horror book like just a straight up horror book. And that's why people were like, at first, usually a little uh, timid to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, her story was cool, you know, and, and, and uh, it's just, a, you know, I always felt like there was a lot for, you know, different types of characters and people to latch on to, whether it's Cain and Abel or... Uh, I always like the incorporation of the House of Secrets and the House of Mystery.
Yes, this page is one of those uh, slow grind pages, and hopefully it, you know, it's also one of those pages I'll point out when people are flipping through the, the issue when it comes out, I'm sure. I'll be like, hey, I thought this came out okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I hope they get picked up or, you know, I'm sure they'll have success if they shop it around. It would be interesting if uh, Disney or somebody picked up the the show. I don't know if they have like a no, you can't go there clause in their in their contract with uh, Netflix. But, you know, if Netflix doesn't pick it up, like what happened with the tick, there's like a countdown clock that starts until the cast gets released from their contracts. And, uh, you know, it's obviously easier to re you know, get the show going is with everybody still under contract. Uh, it's not that it's pedestrian. It's just what you, what you prefer reading. It's a, uh... steeped in superhero lore. I think you were putting together some Defenders books the last time we were, we were diving in some bins. And some Iron Man. Yeah, that would be great, you know. And uh, I know, I know, DC. Some of their projects have been, you know, put on the put on the shelf or canceled lately. So, have you heard the fate of uh, Doom Patrol yet? I, I like that show. I was wondering if it was going to continue with all the cancellations and everything. Your superheroes have to have power. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've never actually want, thought about it that way. I'd have to think about characters that I like that don't have powers. Well, Iron Man doesn't have powers. I'm not a big Iron Man guy, but you were picking up some of those books last time we were bin diving. <laughs> I'm not a big defenders guy. If I've got any of those issues, I'll toss them your way. I'm just not a, I think I have a few early issues. I think there's one that Ralph ain't the cover that I picked up. But I definitely need to downsize. Oh yeah, that I would agree with. I'm not a, not a fan of the Punisher comics. But hey, I would have done my best on that Punisher panel. I bought the essentials. I was reading them, 
get my questions ready, you know. But alas, it did not happen. I somehow think it would have been to my advantage uh, to not have been a big fan of the Punisher and have been moderating that panel. Just because it wouldn't be like, hey, you remember that time Punisher like killed that guy? That was awesome. I would not be that guy. I would not in any circumstances be the Chris Farley with um, Paul McCartney meme, I guess, is more known for than the fact that it was SNL. They made pizza for dinner, so I'm not surprised I'm thirsty. I guess people can also see now why it takes me so long to finish an issue of this combination of what I'm putting down and I can't work on it all the time. But I want to put out books I'm proud of instead of rushed books. So slow and steady, as long as I get to keep working on it. Uh, yes, the sculpture had four arms. He did. Yep. I think that's a little too small for my hands tonight with the brush. I love working on bigger stuff with a brush. When I get into the small, intricate stuff, I lose some of my dexterity and my hands are a little shaky. So I do have to switch back and forth between like tech pens and the brush.
Um, for Helena, not really. Um, just because it's one of the few places where I don't feel like I can make like gigantic mistakes, you know, I find it hard to get back into the groove of like, um, other people's characters for sure. Like, um, you know, anytime I'm asked to draw a character, I don't draw regularly. That's a challenge for me. Sometimes it's a welcome challenge. Other times I just want to draw something that I know how to draw, especially when I'm stressed out or don't feel like I have my A game. But Helena, Undersea Hero, um, even Iron Face, like the tick I've been drawing so long, I feel like I can draw him at any time. But that's not always the case with dealing with the tick comic books because I can, you know, even after all these years, like NEC will still like censor and edit things in ways that I can't even fathom. So. There are some days though when I'm staring at a computer all day doing, you know, uh, freaking logo revisions or whatever that, you know, it's tough to just get into the, get into drawing. So that's when I'll pull out my sketchbook and really just draw. And, it, and it's because it's the only thing I can, you know, focus on is just drawing faces and hands and studies and stuff like that. Doing full compositions, um, can be can be really challenging at the end of a long day, you know. Doing even even if it's my own stuff, um, you know, any day where I don't get to draw at all, even on my lunch break like yesterday, it's hard to like just get into drawing sometimes. But I don't, you know. There are times when I don't really have a choice. You know, there's so many people in the industry that like. They can turn down work. They can miss a deadline. They can, you know, they can do that stuff. And, you know, they've got another one waiting. I, I barely have the ones that, you know, reluctantly ask me to do something waiting. Um, it's not to say there aren't creators that want to, that want to work with me. There, there are. I have folks I'm happy to work with. But uh, as far as like, you know, having you know, editors at the, on, on speed dial that I do not have. Wish I did, but I do not. Or I should say more apropos, they don't have me on speed dial. <laughs> okay, that means I'm gonna you know, I was looking at my schedule over the next year or so, you know, if um, things remain the same, I'm going to be able to put out books of my own that I'm going to be really proud of and work with some really cool people. So that just means it's a no guarantee for like a page rate or whatever. So, I'll, you know, next, next year, I'll definitely be doing Kickstarter and stuff with my own work and my own projects. And, um, especially since I've had like complete backup and log jam with NEC, like they, they have gotten to where they barely respond as far as talking about books coming out. So you know, I'll try calling them, but It just means annoying posts about, uh, please support my Kickstarter. And I am talking to the Iron Face guys about actually broadcasting, just working on the book, um, doing it as like a video series. And I, I, think, I think it would be cool, like if you could see the whole book get made and like how much work it is and we document that, I think that could be cool. You know, that's the kind of thing I would have loved to have seen when I was, you know, first coming up.
Now that might mean I might have to broadcast like twice a week. Um, and I might have to hop on with like, um, you know, Dan on his show on the Sour Kool-Aid show or something. I don't know. Maybe they want to do that. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Hey, heck. I think it's, I think it's a cool thing. And, and when I'm done with, you know, my issue of Helena, I'm going to compile all the pages videos that I do into one big, like super cut. And, uh, you know, I'll be able to be like, Hey, here's a whole bunch of video time lapse of me working on the book. Plus, I've just been dealing with, you know, th this month has been challenging professionally. I will put it that way. That's the nicest way I can put it for public consumption. Um, it'll make an entertaining... Uh, Discussion over a beer. I don't have an iPad. I've, I've been meaning to get some sort of thing. And, and that's a really smart idea. So like, maybe that's the kind of thing where I'll look for it on like Black Friday to see if I can get even just like a, you know, not an iPad, but like a some kind of tablet that I could have with me at the at the conventions. Because you're right, that would be cool to have at the table. It would be something you don't see at all the tables. Like, hey, here's here's the book getting made. I'm gonna stand up. I'd like to thank the few folks that are in here this evening. Feel free to chime in if you like. Looks like we've had people floating in and out. People got stuff to do. I would like everyone to know also, it's very important that my cat has determined that it is now fall. And uh, how that occurred is that my cat gets super lethargic. Like, and I think he's dying in the summertime. Like, Jesus, is this the end? Is this the end for Penny? And then one day when there's a cool breeze and the sun's a little further away from planet Earth, he just starts jumping around and running around like he's a spry young kitten again. And that is the first day of fall. It's very accurate, highly accurate. It's not, you know, it hasn't been officiated by anyone yet, but I, I feel like that it's a, it's a very strong way to determine uh, when fall begins and fall began yesterday. According to my cat. I don't think it's unreasonable. I, hey, you know, when he's, when you see him looking that miserable during the hot weather, like it's like, and he's lethargic. And then even on a day where it's like not even all that hot and he still like, looks like he's on death's door. And then like the first day of like a cool breeze, he's like running around like he's five to seven years younger. That's the first day of fall. That's, uh, that's how he tells us. I mean, hell, people listen to a groundhog still, so I feel like it's just as reasonable as me listening to my cat as to when fall starts.
Doug, have you ever tried to do like an iPad or a screen at a table? I never have. It feels like it'd be a good idea. I don't know. Especially if you could have it, whatever you're playing on it, saved on it, so you don't have to pay extra for the for the Wi-Fi. There's a bit of a plant that goes in front of his foot here, so you're not going to see that until later. It's good to know, Jonathan, that your cat also does it. I, I, I think that this is, uh, I think we've stumbled onto the new method. I'm sure it's not new. I'm sure someone else much smarter than us early on in humans' existence um, figured this out, but I think it's perfectly reasonable. Now, I'm not talking about playing anything with like music over and over again. I would, you know, we were talking about doing like a time having when I finish this issue, compile the videos together and make a time lapse and then have it just play on a loop or whatever. I don't know. Seems like a good idea, but. Yeah, that's true. I did, uh, Douglas, get those books back from CBCS. Got those back from uh, Cody and the gang. Yeah, that makes sense, man. You know. I guess it seems more nifty than practical. The other thing uh, I've d designed into working on uh, Helena Jonathan is like the organic panel borders. So it saves me the time of grabbing a ruler. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not ruling it out. You know, I don't have an iPad or anything of any kind, and I'm not bringing my laptop to a convention. That would take up way too much space. You're right about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe a small iPad. I mean, most people have them anyway for credit cards, right? Or they use their phone. I do look for things that differentiate my booth from other, you know, comics and artists. You know, you, the easiest to quit, like answers, obviously, well, the work does that, but we both know that like, depending on the show, you, you got to do something to get folks who maybe aren't there to buy comics to look at comics or, or don't even know that comics are there. That's another one I run into. Yeah, it could be. 
I'm also looking to, you know, grow the stream and get people to check it out. So I've been using flyers, but I don't, don't know if those have been very effective. You know, I put them in with every time somebody buys something, like I'll put it in the bag and board or I'll put it in the, the giant Ziploc bags that I use for original artwork. Yeah, that's true. I would like to figure out a way to um, broadcast on my own channel the um the drawing comics panels that i do because they usually have they, they're usually filming the panels at the shows i go to so if there's a way to either get the video or have it be on my channel live I would, that would be cool sometimes i can get like just get a link to the posted video sometimes they never post the video All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna put the uh, the the links on my new business cards. I have to print some new business cards. I ran out at the last show. I haven't ordered them in years. I bought a giant box years ago, and I've been living off that for a while. Oh, great. Glad they got there safe. Thank you. Hey, you did a great cover. I'm glad, uh, glad you'll have them in time to sling at your next show. And you're welcome to, you know, reproduce the cover, or whatever. I know you've used it for a couple of things. You know, it's just one of those things that I, I think that should be standard amongst indie indie publications, but it just isn't. You know, if you want to put it in an art book, if you want to put it in, you know, on your website, whatever. Right? Just make sure I'm listed in the copyright. Oh, thanks. There's, there's, there's some that I wish I could redo, but you know how it is. They're the best I could do at the time. And I'm just trying to do better ones for this issue. And I think you'll get some of the pacing stuff I was going for, definitely. And I, I haven't really had much in the way of like uh, talk with other creators on that stuff. We were talking about that earlier where like I'll like I'll do the thumbnails for the whole book first so that there's actually like the pacing throughout the whole book is is planned and edited before you know even starting the pencils and because you're planning the reading experience you want it to have the right
timber, is that the right word? But yeah, and let me know if you um if you put them for sale like on your website or whatever, I'll share the link and all that jazz. And I, I did apply for um, Doug. I, uh, I meant to um, P DM you. I did apply for uh, my pro status at SDC, SDCC and WonderCon. And uh, when the applications for you know table space badges, whatever comes up, I'll I'll get in on the lottery. If um, see how it goes. <laughs> one thing I, I remembered about issue one that um, I wanted to do, and I know it's not something that like uh, is, is obvious for folks who uh, don't read a lot of comics or don't draw comics is uh, the, the pacing for the opening. Um, I wanted the very beginning to be like that. It's a nine panel grid and it's like a real slow drip. And then, you know, the big splash and two panels and three panels and like the pace of it. I wanted it to go from slow, just first page drawing you in. There's not a lot of words, but there's a lot to look at. You know, you could go through that first page real quick. Like you can go through those nine panels fast. Um, cause there's just one word in each panel. It's not like I'm bogging it down. And then I wanted it to like, boom, 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 boom through the, through the opening, you know, fight scene, just establish that she's, you know, this tough lady and not to be trifled with, but follows, you know, has reason for her actions, you know? Yeah, I will, uh, you know, I'm, Gonna, gonna go for it. Gonna go for go for broke with all that stuff. Because I know, you know, I know all this stuff around, you know, getting this like the space, getting place to stay. You know, I have a I have a routine for that stuff. I just because I've been going with NEC, I hadn't had to sign up for my own space or anything. So. but I want to do it at least once. Because so. over the years, I have made some friends out there and some people who have expressed, you know, sadness that I was not at other shows. And, you know. and it's also one of the only places where I can flat out just walk up to an editor and be like, hey, Mike, what's up? Oh, thanks, man. That was just something I had in my head from ages past that I wanted to do. And there's a sequence in this issue that I thought of, you know, years ago that I was trying to, not the story, but just the actual layout. And I know that that's insane to say, like, I had a layout for an action sequence in my head for years, but it's true.
it's like, why do you put a plant there? Well, you're creating layers, you know, and if this plant is in front of this foot and this foot is in front of these plants, it's just creating those layers of depth. And, you know, maybe this page is too busy to notice all the layers, but still try to put them in there. And also like the coloring, you know, when I'm at this stage, it's true. That is a, it's a real tough thing to do. Um, but at this stage, I'm already thinking about the coloring where the colors on the foreground plants are going to be a uh, very cool background, very distant background, very cool. And then the light and the warm parts are going to be in the middle and backlit here. So like, I'm already planning the coloring in my head for this. I even have notes on the coloring on the, uh, the thumbnails. I do wonder if I, I should have gone with uh, watercolors, but um, then the issues would take even longer. <laughs> I will definitely do like a watercolor short story. I actually am, I have a holiday story in mind for, for Helena. And, and the reason being uh, is obviously because of my first comic book being a holiday special. It would not be a Christmas special. It would be a holiday special. That's the kind of thing I'd like to do and just post it for free. Uh, we did that with, uh, Jeff and I did that with a tick story a, a couple of years ago where we just did a tick Christmas story. I drew it in preliminary like blue pencils and just posted it for fun. And he see, didn't say anything really. Like when I asked one of the employees if they liked it, they said that they really liked it. And then when I asked another person who's an editorial, he was like, uh, we didn't like that it wasn't, you know, that it was in blue pencil. And I basically was like, you know, those are preliminary drawings. You know, I wasn't getting paid. We did it for fun. It's like, oh, I still, still didn't like it. It's like, okay, cool. But yeah, I'm thinking like a five page story, do it in watercolors, uh, Helen and her brother, and a, a minor holiday problem. And I have a short uh, horror comedy story I'm doing actually for my buddy Jay. It's a three pager. Uh, it's about a ghost who's trying to furnish his apartment and uh, he buys a rug from uh, he buys a rug from a place much like Ocean State Job Lot. I can't say that it is that. It's not that. I can officially say that it's not that, but it's a store like that. And um, let's just say it involves the ghost of a dead animal found in, to, in the in the rug wreaking havoc. Hilarity ensues. Yeah, it does sound like them, Doug, because it's, uh, it's the truth. You can see it's taken me an hour and a half to ink this one one character. So hopefully it doesn't take one. It'll be about three, six, seven, probably. Maybe it will take nine hours to do this this page to ink this page. It's a lot going on.
Let's, uh, let's lose some of this pencil on here. Let's see if we can clean it up a little bit. I'm still reading that New Gods book that a buddy of mine bought me. And the Jerry Conway. Here, this this will make you mad. Yeah. This is what I'm reading. I love you, Jerry, but I, I feel like um, I feel like he didn't draw any of this. And I'm sure it was not his decision to, to put that on there. Yeah, maybe I should use see if I can scan this into the computer and upload it to one of those AI programs and just be like, ink this. How exactly how I would do it with like all my idiosyncratic mistakes as well, please. Yeah, I'm sure Jerry had nothing to do with that editorial decision. Um, but uh, yeah, I was pretty sure he didn't draw any of it. They only get mentioned like in tiny print on the back of the, it's not on the back of this, it's on the dust jacket. Get some schmutz. Always schmutz. So I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not, with that book, I'm not putting any of that on uh, the writer. It's all on DC for, again, just furthering the corporate plan of making writers or reducing the role of artists ever since image. I, I honestly do believe that that's part of the image legacy was like companies saying, we're never allowing this to happen again where superstar artists can just walk away and take our market share. Nine thirty already, my goodness. I'll turn into a pumpkin soon. Oh, one thing I, uh, Yeah, that's not the um, the dust jacket. I took it off. I take the dust jackets off when I'm reading hardcover books. Um, that's what's underneath the dust jacket. I think they used the basically the cover from the first issue. Yeah. 
Yeah, Don Newton drew most of the stuff that was in there. Um, there's an issue by Rich Buckler, and then there's a couple of Justice League issues by George Perez in there. How many issues are hit or miss for me? I think there are times where he tried to stay too close to the source material, actually too close to the Kirby stuff by actually revisiting um, the same locations that happened, like the uh, the amusement park and stuff in some of the later New Gods issues that I don't think are as strongly written. I like the character Bug. I know some people don't like uh, that character from the Hive, but um, they also changed you know, Orion's design for whatever reason. Got rid of his cool helmet and just made him look like a regular superhero. It was actually my buddy, uh, Mike Vosberg, who drew the first issue. Um, I don't know if I've ever asked him about drawing the new gods. I've talked to him a lot of, about a lot of his projects over the years, but I don't know if I've ever asked him about it. Well, give me a reason to send him an email. Be like, hey, I'm reading this book. How are you? How's, how's the missus? And you can see how long it's going to take. But I thought I'd start with the Finn man because he's got a forgiving design for, for inking and drawing in general. If I ever, if I live long enough and draw enough comic books for someone to ever ask for the Fin Man at a, at a con for a sketch, my heart would grow three sizes, Douglas. You'd zoom in and it'd be just like the Grinch. I know it seems like a little thing, but I, you know, I'm one of those folks that likes if you ask for a character that I, I've worked on and enjoy working on, or one of my characters, I have a lot of fun drawing sketches of them for people. You know, I always kind of like that Iron Face piece I did in Colorado. I spent a good six hours on that piece. Don't tell the missus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Desiree, working on a big old, like two thirds splash page for the next issue. Now, if I was a smart man, um, I would have ended the issue with this splash page with like the classic cliffhanger, who are these people? But I decided to make the promise early on to have full stories in each issue. So I've got, a number of pages to go after this. 
I actually couldn't do that. You know, looking at the layout, I would have had to have rewritten some things because this is not in the middle of the book. This is like uh, beyond the halfway point. I would have had to have moved some things around. How are you doing tonight? What are you up to? Just a quick pop in. You got dinner plans for the evening? You catching a movie or something? Doing something fun, I hope. Oh, there's a big battle in the next issue that I, I have I have plans for. The one after this one, there's a they're uh, they're going through the uh, land of monsters to get to this uh, hidden place um, where someone who they're looking for is supposedly there, and um, when they meet a person there, um, there there's definitely a big flashback with a big battle, and I know I've been promising it, and I know people volunteered to be killed off. This is really like the first time I'll be able to put people in. My buddy Nate has been like, dude, how come you haven't killed me yet in your book? Um, Jay has been the same way. Uh, my friend Allison. The issue after this is called uh, Son of Thread. Um, and it will be... Ah, uh, animated fairy tales. Okay, cool. That means we can carry it over to another issue. Because if you're a horrified onlooker, that means you can be like, you know, part of gasping crowd. You know, a, you know, a royal audience. You could also be, you know, uh, many many uses. So we don't have to kill people off. I had my dryer uh, break at my. Um, the first place I, I ever lived by myself. And um, what I ended up doing was because it was raining outside one day and I needed to dry clothes. I strung up a rope in various places of the house and had indoor clotheslines with a fan on them. And I'm sure the neighbors were like, this person is crazy. Do we need to, you know, call the police? Is he doing something terrible? Um, but I was literally just hanging clothes like in the living room and in the uh, uh, dining room and then putting the fans, blowing them on. Um, and it worked. So, hey, had clean clothes, could go out with friends later, not be embarrassingly smelly. Um, but yeah, I went to the went to the hardware store and. Uh, <laughs> hey, if you got enough hangers for for to dry your clothes, let's say you will look less crazy than I did using a clothesline indoors. But I had I just had, I had so many clothes I had to dry. I don't. I'm trying to remember if that was the year. It was yes, that would have been one of the times I believe my my wife was coming to Nantucket. And I was working at the uh, Historical Association. One oh two. No, thank you. Do you experience now when I lived in Ohio with my folks? I don't know how it is out there, but we actually had heat fog where it was so hot and the humidity was so high and it's because ohio is actually a drain swamp you know the whole state is a drain swamp and uh so we actually got like fog that was hot and it didn't cool it off after it was there
It was the worst thing ever, and playing summer league baseball in it was was dreadful. Like you would be sweating even before you started sweating. Like you would be soaking wet from this stuff. There was one time we had actually had a game canceled because of the fog um, in the summertime. I think I'm trying not to do mostly just dry. Well, I mean, it's still hot. I'm not, I'm not downplaying that. It's not like friggin' ridiculously oppressively hot. I just didn't know if it got that humid out there. Um, oppressive heat is oppressive heat. You know, my brother lived in Arizona and, uh, he, he lives out uh, towards Reno now, but um, he used to tell me like, you know, even though it's a dry heat, you're still soaking wet from sweating. Well, I hope it cools off soon for you. I think the hottest I've ever like experienced was actually at a Cincinnati Reds baseball game. And I forget what the on-field temperature was, but it was definitely over a hundred degrees. And they actually pulled like a pro player out for um, heat stroke, I believe. It was so hot that they, they a major league ballpark was giving away uh, water wasn't bottled water or anything, but like to see a major league ballpark give anything away. Yeah, and it was at the old Cincinnati stadium, not the current one. So it was actually outdoor um, uh, AstroTurf. And it was the old AstroTurf, you know, from the seventies not like the sport turf that they have at NFL stadiums now. So it was literally like a plastic carpet on top of concrete. I actually only ever played one baseball game on that type of Astro turf. Um, it was at old Clipper stadium. They still had Astro turf. Oh, wow. At a concert? Man. Surprised they didn't just like give you a coupon for like 10% off water. I've never seen anything free at a concert. I don't... Now you might ask why there is a little bit of texture. I'm glad they did. I'm glad they did. They showed humanity. Where I'm assuming it's at a Ticketmaster event. Uh, humanity is not always their 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 forte. Um, these little bits of texture are so that even in black and white, you'll be able to differentiate Finn Man from the background and from the dirt and everything else. It's to give him a signature visual note that if 
on a future panel, you see just like a little bit of him. Like if you just see like his elbow or like part of his hand and you see that texture, that is just for Finn Man. Oh man. Jeez. I've done one show at a fairgrounds too, and it was raining and it had a leaky roof. So I've I've felt the pain of water at a situation like that but man i have never um not from heat that sounds horrendous oh thank you yeah he's like a uh he's an old another old friend from the college days i don't yeah i don't think you were around when i was talking about it. i actually made like a giant six foot tall sculpture thing of the fin man Back in the back in the college days, made out of all sorts of stuff: melted plastic, wire, spray paint, trash bags, paper mache. Any trick in the book that I knew. But thank you. Yeah, he's a he's a fun one. And he's the kind of character where if someone was like, "Hey, I I would like to do." a backup story for your book or something. I would say like, hey, here's here's Finn Man. He's got some cool ideas. Because I've actually always wanted to do a book with a character that, and this, you can do it with comedy, you can do it with action, but like just a character who can't communicate verbally so that you have to do it all visually, all the communication. Like, I, and I don't know if I would want to do a um, character who knows sign language. I mean, that would be cool for someone who knows sign language that draws comics to do that. That would be cool. But I was just thinking visually, like, you know, a scenario where they have to pantomime and they have to, you know, act everything out. Yeah, yeah. But again, with like a fantasy character or, you know, an imaginary character, if we could, you know, use it as an, a visual storytelling uh, method where you have to show everything, that would be, that would be a fun challenge, I think. Hello, Mr. Peeper. Um, you can get the book on my website if you want, um, the regular version or a sketch cover. But the sweet Doug Pas Douglas Paskovich cover, you'd have to get through him. And he's in the um, he's in the chat. And uh, his his cover is actually in the back of all of the other editions as a pinup. So if you got, you know, the um, sketch cover, or if you got Doug, uh, or, uh, John Lucas has a exclusive cover. That's just a um, 
just the line art that he did of the cover. If you got any of those, you'd also get Doug's artwork. I have to throw Doug some money to see if he'll sign some copies for me. Mail them back to me. <laughs> hey, we made I make the agreement with the the people who get their exclusive covers that I don't sell their covers. I I I, I don't I don't think it's right to have exclusives offered in other places. So we had the agreement it was exclusive to you. But the regular edition. Uh, oh, hey, Kevin. Thanks for popping in. Um, good to see you. I hope you're doing all right. Hope it's a good busy. Have I done any cons? Yeah, I did the, uh, I think since you were last on, I did the Colorado Springs show, which was very nice. Um, busy. Um, I talked to a local reporter at the, at the show. <laughs> oh, thanks, Desiree. Yeah. That's what I do on the Helena stuff. I draw stuff how I feel like drawing it, and I put as much stuff into it as I want to. Some some places tell me not to, so I get to just keep noodling away. Um, where was I? Oh, I was talking to the uh, the newspaper guy at um, Colorado Springs, and um, he was asking me about like what I thought was important and good about comic conventions, and um, I just talked to him about, you know, introducing people to comics. Um, and how, how it's really important and wonderful and how I love giving people their first comics. And I usually bring a small stack of books to give to kids, um, you know, and to, not just to kids. Like there was an artist there that who had never read a comic book. Um, they, they were a painter or they hadn't bought one in years and not since they were a kid and I, you know i gave them one and i said hey this is what i do and how i do it and you know me and my friends get together every wednesday on this stream uh, yeah it's tough like finding that balance uh, in the case of this shot, like this is like the, I don't know what the appropriate word is, is this is the, this is the reveal of the folks that are sort of following him around, following her around. Um, and they've been hearing this jingling sound and you find out on this panel that it's a little bell around this little kiwi bird. You can see here's the little kiwi bird and uh, that's his little bell. He's got armor. Um, but yeah, it's a little kiwi bird that these folks, have, they keep as a scout. And um, this is where they meet. Hey, thank you very much, Kevin. Yeah, I was just mentioning, uh, give, him, give him a comic sound. But, uh, um, that's really nice. Yeah, I actually should do that this year because I have a big box of comics that I'm just looking to unload. Um, and there's some good stuff in there. There's, you know, it's just stuff that's, you know, not 
collector's valuable. It's good reader, good reading stuff. Got some like Marvel Comics Presents. Got you know, and they're beat up because they've all been read by me and who knows how many other people. <laughs> we can't stop talking about Eli. He's just he's the he's the he's the life of parties he's not even at. Thanks, bud. It's the uh, the reveal of some new characters that show up in the story and right now I'm drawing the Finn man who I came up with back in college and I, back then I made like a big like 6 foot tall sculpture out of him and now I get to put him in one of my stories, which is fun. But thanks, bud. You've inked your fair share of pages. No, it disintegrated over time. And at one point, I still had the head. Um, but all the paper mache and wire and cheap plastic eventually just fell apart. I could make another one, but it would just take probably. I think I honestly spent probably maybe 100 bucks on materials for it. I like sculpting. It's just it takes it takes a long, long time. I've actually been thinking about doing a. Uh... <laughs> hey, thanks for popping in, Desiree. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll post her when she's done. Enjoy your dinner. Um, an inflatable zombie fetus. I've actually been thinking about sculpting like maybe busts or something in clay of the main characters. And again, just trying to think of interesting things to have on a table at a convention. You know, buying a couple pounds of Sculpey at uh, Michael's is a pretty cheap way to make uh, cool visual aids. Kevin, if you don't know uh, Douglas's book, then uh, just dive right in. With, you know, get, just jump in with both feet. Just uh... Voodoo Joe will 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 become your uh, your your guide and your uh, your north star, and will be your north star in life. Although I do think I've met more of the, uh, in my time on this planet so far, I've met more of people like the Census Bureau guy. And I did find my issue one and Douglas, I, uh, I didn't, at your request, I did not mail it to you with your, your books. Wanted to send it to you though, I'm not gonna lie. Wanted to send it to you.
How many hours? Uh, me and Doug were, were guessing probably about nine hours on this panel. And then this is like a close up of the Kiwi bird with his little bell on um, with a fully black background. And it just has the jingle, jingle, jingle sound uh, behind him. Um, so yeah, probably about 12 hours or so. It does, it does. Left a strong impression on myself and some of my pals at the shop. I think it's right here. Maybe it's not. Guess I lied. Yeah, it must be in an. I, th I think it's over on the uh, on the table out in the other room, on the shipping table. I actually have a couple more things to ship out tomorrow. Which is good. A couple of nice folks picked up a sold a Helena and a Red Sonia off the website. So lost again. No, it's I, I'm pretty sure it's on the table in the uh, other room. But that does happen. I I am notorious, and and this happened uh, a couple of times recently for putting something in a safe place. To the point where I, it's safe for me. Can't even find it again. Uh, Kevin, probably actually, um, yeah. I will actually probably have time um, for a piece. Maybe maybe just for you. Maybe I'll just get yours done because you've been very kind and patient. But yeah, shoot me a shoot me a DM um, tomorrow or this week sometime. We'll get we'll get you figured out. We'll get you squared away. Well, it's after 10 o'clock, and I know we're not done, but, you know, that's, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Oh, wow, little, little thumbnail. Um, but yeah, that's it for tonight. Um, yeah. 
hope everybody has a good evening and uh, thanks for popping in. Uh, not my name. I'm sorry you caught the very end at 10 o'clock. I'm just running out of gas and uh, I've got a full work day ahead of me tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, Kevin, shoot me a DM uh, this week. We'll, we'll get you sorted out. Um, if it's X Men playing it, playing baseball, I'm uh, I'm all for it. Um, I actually really like those issues. I know some people hated them, but I always liked them. A close up, a close up, sure. I want to make sure I get this foot right of it getting planted down with the dirt spitting up. But, thank you, sir. Good night, everybody. Love seeing you. Love talking to you next Wednesday. Hope to see you again. Safe travels. Comic-Con. Good night.